You are here. You are here. You're moving in my midst. Sing it to him. I worship you. I worship you. You are here. You're working in our midst. And I worship you. I worship you. You are my way maker, miracle worker, promise keeper, light in the darkness. That is who you are. You are my way maker, miracle worker, promise keeper, light in the darkness. Come on, help me sing it to him. You are him. You're touching every heart. I worship you. I worship you. You are here. You're mending every heart. I worship you. I worship you. You are my way maker, miracle worker. Promise keeper, light in the darkness. That is who you are. You are my way maker, miracle worker, promise keeper, light in the darkness. Come on, sing it, way maker, miracle worker. Way maker, miracle worker, way maker. Miracle worker, way maker, miracle worker, way maker. Come on, help me worship him. Way maker, miracle worker, way maker, miracle worker. Come on and sing it. Even when I don't see it, come on. Cause even when I don't see it, you're working. Even when I don't feel it, you're working. You never stop. You never stop working, you never stop, even when I don't see it. Even when I don't see it, you're working. Even when I don't feel it, you're working. You never stop, you never stop working, you never stop. Even, cause even when I don't see it, you're working. Come on, help me give him praise. We love you, Jesus. We give you praise. We give you glory. We give you honor this morning, Jesus. We love you, Jesus. We love you. We love you, Lord. We make up. We make up. Miracle worker. We make up. Miracle worker. We make a miracle worker. We make a miracle worker. You never stop. You never stop working. You never stop. We make a. We make a miracle worker. We make a miracle worker. You never stop. Father God, in the name of Jesus, this morning. Me and Pastor Amy, we join our faith together with your wonderful people. Minister the word of God to them. Lord, let them know that their trouble has your attention this morning. Minister to them. Encourage them, I pray. Lift their burdens. Answer their prayer. Bring direction into their lives. Bring your wisdom into their situation this morning. And we say, Lord, have your way. In Jesus' name, somebody say, Amen. Oh, praise be to God. We are continuing in our series this morning. Your trouble have God's attention. Lord, have mercy. Your trouble has God's attention. Yes, it does. Praise God. Specifically, we are talking about your moment of restoration on this morning. You know, God knows how to restore things that you have lost. Are you listening to me? 
So if you are somebody who have suffered great losses, there is a moment of restoration. There is a moment of restoration. God will come through. God will back you up. He keeps his word. His promises never fail. Joshua said at the end of his life, out of all the Lord's good promises, not one promise have failed the house of Israel. All have come to pass. The Bible says in Numbers 23, 19, God is not a man that he should lie, nor the son of man that he should have to repent. If he said it, he will make it good. If he spoke it, he will bring the thing to pass. For David said in Psalms 119, verse 89, Forever, O Lord, thy word is settled. It's settled in heaven. God's not going to change his word for nobody. Oh, come on, somebody. I said this word of God is settled. The Bible says in 2 Corinthians 2, 14, Now thanks be unto God, which always, not sometimes, which always cause us to triumph in Christ. Glory to God. In Christ is the secret to victory. So we're talking about restoration. In the book of Joel, chapter 2, verse 25, God makes a powerful promise. He said, and I will restore to you the years that the locust has eaten the canker worm and the caterpillar and the palmer worm, my great army which I sent among you. Sometimes we experience great losses in our lives. And when you in a moment like that, you have to look to God. You have to call on God. Not only does he have your answer, he is your answer. He is your way out. Are you listening to me? Listen to this. In the book of Second Kings chapter 8, Eight verses 1 through 6, the Bible says, Then spake Elisha unto the woman whose son he had restored to life, this the Shunammite woman, saying, Arise and go thou and your household and sojourn wheresoever thou canst sojourn, for the Lord, pay attention, for the Lord has called for a famine. And it shall also come upon the land seven years. Almost similar to what happened in Egypt with Joseph. Remember Pharaoh's dream and Joseph had to interpret his dream. The Bible says, And the woman arose and did after the saying of the man of God. And she went with her household and sojourn in the land of the Philistines for seven years. And you know, sometimes... Because of the great wickedness of mankind, there are times when God calls for certain things to shake us, to get our attention. Sometimes we are so caught up in this world. We are so caught up in the flesh. God is not on our minds like he should be. And we get into idolatry. We get into all kinds of other stuff other than seeking God the way we ought to. And sometimes God have to allow a famine to come and hit us upside the head and shake us up. Touching our finances in different areas of our lives to get our attention. He did it to the children of Israel over and over and over and over again. He did it in 1 Kings chapter 17 and chapter 18. He told Elijah, go and tell wicked king Ahab, I am calling for a famine on the land. Elijah said, there's not going to be dew nor rain, but according to my word, because you and your father's house have caused the children of Israel to sin and turn their backs against God. Sometimes God have to get our attention. You are nothing without him. Jesus said in John chapter 15, for apart from me, you can do nothing. And sometimes God have to allow things to happen in our lives to get our attention. I know this ain't popular preaching, but it's biblical. Even Jesus made the statement in John chapter 8, verse 31 and 32. Jesus said, if you continue in my word, then are you my disciples indeed. Jesus said, if any man wants to follow me, he must first deny himself, 
take up his cross daily and follow me. You can be following God last year. You could have been following him last week. You could have been following God yesterday and not follow him today. This is why you got to make a daily conscious decision that I'm taking up my cross and following Jesus. Amen. So the Bible says the woman did after the saying of the man of God and she went with a household and sojourned in the land of the Philistines for seven years. Watch this now. And it came to pass that at the seven years end, at the end of that seven years, that the woman returned out of the land of the Philistines. Glory to God. And she went forth to cry unto the king for her house and for her land. Because during that famine that God allowed, hear me clearly, that was a specific famine in this situation. God allowed. God is the one who even called for that famine. So this woman, she obeyed the man of God and went into the land of the Philistines. But that seven years, she lost everything she had. She lost her house. She lost her property. She lost her business. I mean, she had suffered great, great, great losses. And so when she returned after the seven years was over, she returned and went to the king to cry and ask the king, to restore her land and her house and everything she had lost during the famine back to her. Now watch this. So before she got there, the Bible says in verse 4, And the king talked with Gehazi, the servant of the man of God, saying, Tell me, I pray thee, all the great things that Elisha had done. So the king had Gehazi, I'm sorry, the king had Gehazi in his presence to the servant of Elisha. This was someone Elisha was mentoring. And the king said, Gehazi, please tell me all the great miracles that Elisha, the man of God, had seen in his lifetime. Now, just think about this for a second. When you ask Gehazi that question, this man had seen countless miracles took place in the ministry and in the life of Elisha. And out of all of the stories out of all the stories that Gehazi could have shared with the king, he shared this specific story. You tell me the Holy Ghost was behind this. Gehazi began to tell the king in verse 5, and it came to pass as he was telling the king how Elisha had restored a dead body to life. He was sharing the exact story of the woman who was on her way to the king. He was telling the king the story about the Shunammite woman, how her son had died, and how Elisha had raised her son from the dead. Here is the Holy Ghost had already gone before this woman and preparing the groundwork for her to recover all. Some of you praying and you are, you, but you got to take the step. You got to walk by faith. Faith without works is dead. You are on your way believing God to work something for you. Little that you know, God have already gone before you and God have already begun to work that thing out. He is setting the stage. He is laying the foundation. By the time you reach to where you are going to ask for what you're about to ask for, you will find out that God have already set you up for a miracle. Oh, blessed be the name of Jesus. And the Bible says he was telling the king how Elisha had restored a dead body to life that the exact time behold the woman whose son Elisha had restored to life cried to the king for her house and for her land and Gehazi said my lord O king this is the woman and this is her son whom Elisha had restored to life. My God, if the king thought for a second Gehazi was making the story up here comes this woman who had left seven years ago and live in the land of the Philistines, just returned from the land of the Philistines and the exact time she is asked, about to ask the king to restore her land and everything she lost back to her. That was the exact time that Gehazi was sharing the story on how Elisha had raised her dead son to life. Oh, God knows how to work it. The steps of a good man are ordered by the Lord. The timing of God, the orchestration of the Holy Ghost is amazing. Amazing. It is absolute perfection. You couldn't pay somebody to arrange it this good. Verse 6. And when the king asked the woman, she told him, so the king appointed unto her a certain officer, saying, Restore 
all that was hers and all the fruits of the field since the day that she left the land even until now. In other words, the value of the fruits that she would have reaped for seven years. I want you give her in dollar amount. Give her the value of the things. Restore her house. Restore her land. Restore the value. Dare God, even though she wasn't there, she got seven years worth of harvest because she was willing to obey the word of the Lord through the prophet of God. Obedience is better than sacrifice. Believe the Lord your God, so shall you be established. Believe his prophets and so shall you prosper. I'm here to tell you, you are entering into a season of restoration. God is going to help you recover every single thing that you have lost. He is a miracle worker. Is there anything too hard for God? There is nothing too hard for God. I said, there is nothing. My God, my God. God will make a way where there seems to be no way. God will make a way Where there seems to be no way He works in ways we cannot see He will make a way for me He has been my guide Hold me closely by His side With love and strength for each new day he will make a way He will make a way This is for somebody Come on, sing it with me God will make a way Where there seems to be no way He works in ways we cannot see He will make a way for me He will be my guide Hold me closely by his side With love and strength For each new day He will make a way He will make a way Sing it to him God will make a way Where there seems to be no way Father God in the name of Jesus Christ Father, may Pastor Amy join our faith and we ask you in the name of Jesus, make a way for your wonderful people. There are people under the sound of our voices this morning who have suffered great loss. Father, we ask you in the name of Jesus Christ, the Son of God, help them recover all. God, help them to recover everything that they've lost. We are asking you to restore unto them the years that the caterpillar and the canker worm has stolen. We thank you. You said in your word, if we ask anything, in the name of Jesus, it shall be done. And we ask in the name of Jesus this morning. Thank you for hearing us. Listen, we want to give you an opportunity on this morning to stand with the work of God, to support the preaching of the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ. To do so, you can visit us online right now at seanpinder.net forward slash give. You can also give through the ministry PayPal account. That address is paypal.me forward slash seanpinder ministries. You can also text to give. All you have to do is text the letters SPM to the number 45888 and a link will automatically be sent to you. You can also give through the Ministry Zell account. The Ministry Zell email address is info at seanpinder.net. Info at seanpinder.net. You can also give through the Ministry Cash App account. The Ministry Cash App address is the dollar sign Sean Pinder Ministries. You can also mail your donations into the ministry. Just remember to make your checks and money orders out to Sean Pinder Ministries, P.O. Box 2726, McKinney, Texas, 75070. And listen, if you're watching us through one of our social media platforms, we invite you, if you're watching through YouTube, to subscribe to our YouTube channel. Click 
on that subscribe button and then click on the gray bell which will turn on all the notifications. Every time we send out new videos, you'll receive those. Make sure to follow us on Facebook. Amen. And we are asking all of our social media family, share this video with at least five people. Help us reach one million people a month with the gospel of Jesus Christ. Nothing is impossible. Nothing is impossible with God. Let's reach this world with the gospel of Jesus Christ. Never forget, me and my beautiful wife, Pastor Amy, we love you. We appreciate you. We'll see you on tomorrow. God bless you. Bye-bye.